Alright. Here's what I use put under the tires. Either I use a jack stand or I use the ramps. Here we have the engine, of course. First thing I started with was removing the headers. I removed all these bolts in here. Then down underneath, there's three more bolts that hold the header to the pipes down there. Completely remove those because you'll want to get that whole thing out of your way. Of course, you're going to go to the radiator. Once uh, you get all the fluid out of the radiator, you're going to remove your pipe from there. Of course, you're going to move your intake. You're going to remove all your spark plugs. At the same time, it would be a good idea. You can't really see on mine anymore. They've pretty much rubbed off. But I marked every one of them as to where they go in series. Then you're going to step back here and you can see all the bolts that are going to hold your intake on. You're going to remove all of those and just to let you know right in next to that pipe down there there's a tricky one. You're going to have to get that from underneath with a long long extension probably about three extensions is about I think what it took for me plus the ratchet or a breaker bar it's about your best bet then you're gonna have to come back you're gonna have to remove all of these vacuum hoses and lines see I did a little modification here I have eliminated the pipe that goes from here and I put in a little tiny K and N filter. As I did a little modification here with the hose which is gonna have to be taken off. Then you're gonna come around to this side of the engine. As you can see I never put my plastic cover back on. So I always wanted to check on the tension to see if anything was rubbing. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to remove your timing belt. And uh, once you have the car all jacked up, there's a series of bolts that are down there that hold these covers on. You're going to take off all those covers. And then you're going to loosen up the tensioner and uh, remove the timing belt. Then you're, after you have all that taken care of, you're going to remove your throttle cable, which you just remove this bolt right here, spin it all the way back, then this is going to pop out, and then you're going to get back under here, and you're going to have to twist it up and out, out of the lever that, that's in there, it's a little, it's kind of tricky, but it'll take you a little bit, you'll figure it out just a wire with a little clamp on the end a little round thing that sort of like uh, same thing that they use on uh, bicycles for the brakes and you're gonna come around here you're gonna remove this this is the fuel line for the return so be careful there might be still pressure in that here's your brook the here's your booster for your brakes that's gonna have to come off as well and this one right here as well is going to have to come off because it's connected down below. And of course then you have a series of wires which are pretty nice because they're color coded. You know and you really can't mess those up when you take them off. Or put them back I should say because uh, they only fit in the plugs that they came out of. You're going to go back here. There's one back there. You're going to remove that as well. Once you have this and this and all that stuff out of the way and you've already got your spark plug wires out of the way and you've already removed your 
intake and the whole assembly, got it out of your way. You have removed your exhaust, got it completely out of your way. That's when I'm going to concentrate on removing the valve cover gasket and the cover. Um, just these four bolts and the ground. I just tuck that back. Um, another good tip is I usually lay a towel over each side of um, the sides so that when I'm using my tools I can get to them pretty easily and they don't fall down into the engine or underneath. And another thing that is important that I did is I took some small cups and I labeled the cups as to what screws, bolts, and clamps came out of what areas. Um, once you remove your valve cover, it's uh, pretty self-explanatory under there. Um, you have your cam cage, which you're going to leave intact, and then you have your bolts that hold your head on. You're going to remove all of those. Same thing too, once you remove all those, uh, clean them all up. If you have a wire wheel, that's great. If you just buy a little wire wheel that you put on the end of a drill and uh, clean them all up very well. Um, so that way when you go to reinstall them, you get good true specs out of the torque wrench. Um, I went to Sears and bought about their, I think it was $80 torque wrench. And... Uh, it was sufficient to do the job for torquing the head back down. Um, now if there's a couple plugs down in here, there's a, a thermal sensor, and there's another uh, O2 sensor, and there's some plugs and stuff. All this is going to all have to come off. Same with uh, the distributor, you just pop these two take out these bolts there's three bolts that hold it in and bam you're done that distributor will come out it only goes in one way it only comes out one way funny thing you can never put it in wrong because if you do it'll sit sideways in there so uh, it's pretty easy there and after you get that all done you're ready to take it to the machine shop I have it done